Hey, what's going on, my fellow gamers? It's D Werewolf Gaming here, back with another Remedy 2 video. All right, guys, I want to first start off by thanking everybody who has subscribed to the channel and those who have continued to support me since day one. It means a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. We already had 2K subscribers, so that's you know that's just amazing, guys. Uh, the new year started off only at 500 subscribers, and now I'm at 2,000, so that's just you know it's just wonderful. I really appreciate all the support. And all those who came through and subscribed and those who, who are loving the content and taking time to comment on my videos or, you know, just give me overall good su suggestions. Uh, I can't say, guys, from time to time I do get a couple of negative people as usual, that's, which can't be expected when you're doing this type of stuff. You know, at the end of the day, I'm always down for constructive feedback. You see something I'm doing wrong or something I may, that you may think is better that you're using, guys. I'm always up for, uh, you know, just leave a comment. Uh, I try it out. And, uh... Anytime, especially when it comes to these builds, I will try it out. And if it doesn't work for me, guys, I, that doesn't mean the build doesn't work in general. It just means that I couldn't get it to work. So with that being said, guys, you know, because a lot of people, like I said this before, when it comes to playing games, guys, everybody plays games their own way. They, don't, they, they have their own methods and styles when it comes to tackling this content. I like the Invader, you know, some of the things it can do, but it wasn't a whole lot that I really cared about it, to be honest with you. But today I am going to show you a build that is viable on Apocalypse. I did choose the new DLC to, to, to showcase this uh, the gameplay because I felt these enemies were pretty challenging on uh, on the new DLC to Awakened King. But with that being said, uh, you know, overall, I, I did enjoy playing with this build. I think those who like playing the Invader will enjoy this build. But though, I can't say this build that I did choose. I did choose a, a little more tanky of a build, and you will see. So with that being said, you know, anytime you go tanky on a build, you do sacrifice damage. So I'm not going to be able to kill these bosses as quickly as I normally can playing with such uh, other archetypes such as the, uh, the hunter or the gunslinger or even, the, you know, even the, the challenger class can do a lot of damage pretty quickly. But he does more when he's paired with such as classes such as the hunter the, or the gunslinger or even the, arch, uh, uh, the ritualist class. But uh, overall, this still is a fun build. Uh, I think you can get through most of the content on this game because when it comes to the bosses, guys, it's more about learning the boss mechanics then uh so much of the amount of damage you can do now don't get me wrong it would be better if you can kill those bosses quicker so you know because uh less room for mistakes the longer you're in the fight with a boss the more likely you are to make a mistake i'm gonna let you finish watching me fight these two bosses and then we will go over the build that i am using for this particular build now the next boss i am about to fight guys is the one true king and this guy he has a lot of immunity phases so on the, on the parts where he goes immune guys i will fast forward that just to save time on this video didn't want to keep the video too long but i did want to showcase the whole entire fight so that because uh i put out other videos before and i think i actually just flat out just cut those parts out because i felt like that was you know this guy he has too many immune phases if you don't kill him quick enough, he will. He can regenerate a good bit of his health back. So this fight, what I'm going to do is when he spawns the ads, I will just fast forward a little bit so you still can see what's taking place. But I am going to, uh, you know, like I say, try to not keep this video too long because I know, like I said, most of y'all, these bosses, guys, we've seen them a, a thousand times now. There's so many videos out with people fighting these bosses and stuff. So I don't want to keep this video long. Uh, I, I can't wait for some more DLC, some more content to play, so, and some more things to grind for in this game. Because I, you know, if me, I love games where you are always looking for loot. You know, I love loot games. There's so many games out nowadays, and these games are long. So me, I, I come home, I, I use, you know, I play other games with stories like Cyberpunk and stuff like that. But I find myself when I'm tired, I just want to turn the game on, find something that I can play, shoot something, and have fun. You know, and collect loot. And these games, that's one reason I play games like. Remnant 2 and Division because those games are loot driven and you know just turn it on and shoot stuff and just have a blast shooting stuff. Let you finish watching the rest of this boss fight and then we'll go to build breakdown at the end of the video. As always, thank you for your time today and those who always take time to support me and leave those comments and, and, and likes whenever you enjoy the, the video. It means a lot. All right.
All right, guys, so we're coming up to about the end of this fight. I do want to apologize for my voice. I, you know, time to time I do go through this spell where, you know, I lose a little bit of my voice. But with that being said, I still want to bring you videos of, of stuff that works on Apocalypse. So we, we're at the end of this fight. And as you see in the video, guys, I did fast forward those scenes where he, he goes immune. Uh, that, to me, that's the most annoying part when fighting this boss here. And it's one of the reasons why I only fight certain bosses in this game. Because uh, some of them, you know, I like their mechanics and some of them I don't. I, overall, I like the, the fighting this guy. He does have a lot of AOE effects that can do a lot a lot amount of damage to you pretty quickly. And it has a wide area effect. So that can be a little annoying. But once you learn his, his patterns and everything, he's not too bad to fight. So that was one reason why I chose to fight him. Uh, just, you know, just to show you that this build works on Apocalypse. All right, so let's get ready to go over this build breakdown. All right, guys. So let's go with this build. Uh, my primary class was the die was the challenger, and the main prime perk is called Die Heart. When receiving fatal damage, the challenger becomes invulnerable for three seconds and regenerates 100% of his max health. This can only happen once every 10 minutes, or if you reset it at the World Stone on, on death. All right, the, the, I was using a rampage skill, and it is a heightened state of battle, which increases fire rate by 15%, reload speed by 25%. And movement speed by 15%. This lasts for 10 seconds. Killing and dealing a significant damage grants one stack of rage, which increases range damage by 2.5% per stack. Upon reaching 10 stacks, the challenger goes berserk, which reloads their current firearm and doubles their damage. All right, the first trait is called Face of Danger. Uh, using a relic within 10 meters of any grants two stacks of bulwark and 10% increased damage. You get Power Lifter. Uh, both the stamina cost increase for each weight bracket and stamina regen delay are reduced by 50%, so that's pretty good. All right, you get in intimidating presence after activating the challenger skill. Enemies within 15 meters deal 10% less damage for 15 seconds with an additional 2.5% damage reduction per enemy affected. So you can get up to 10% max uh, damage reduction when uh, the challenger is within 15 meters. All right, and close quarters uh, basically grants a 35% increase to all damage to enemies within 10 meters. The damage bonus tapers off of all the way until 20 meters, and you have critical hit ch chance increased by 10%. All right, the invader was my secondary class I was using, guys, and with the invader class, you know, it's all about movement speed with this particular uh, archetype. But the skill I was using was called Reboot, and what it does is it initiates a data backup of the caster's current health, stamina relic charges, ammo, and negative status effects which are stored for 30 seconds. While the backup is active, you get increased movement speed by 15% and damage reduction by 10%. Reactivating the skill restores all save values from the backup and spawns a decoy for, with that lasts for three seconds. This has a 44 second uh, cooldown. Overall, pretty fun to use uh, to keep you, uh, definitely great in helping keep you alive. And guys, just remember to activate this perk whenever uh, you, you know, you're getting ready to fight a boss or an elite enemy, some, you know, any type of enemy that you think is gonna be pretty challenging. All right, the perks in this class, the first one is called Shark. Sprinting for one second or evading adds one stack of momentum, which increases range and melee damage by 7% and range and melee crit chance by 1% for 15 seconds. You get a max of uh, five stacks with this. All right, the second perk is called Loophole. All ally ranged and melee damage against enemies are distracted by the invader's decoy grants 7.5% base damage as life steal, so that's pretty great as well. Get some life steal whenever they're not targeting you. All right, circum Circumcumvent. Uh, is reduces the cost of evade and combat comeback slide by 15%. Perfect dodge gains an additional 15% reduction as well. And the last trait is called override. Using a relic reduces the threat generation by 25% for 10 seconds. While override is active, the next evade it leaves an empowered decoy, which lasts for 5.5 seconds. All right, guys, wear whichever armor you prefer. I did have the tranquil heart on. Uh, for that passive, what it does, it passively generates grants two health regeneration per second. And when you use the relic, it doubles all health regeneration for 15 seconds. I had a Mythic Weak Spot mod. I had a Mythic Range Critical Hit Damage mod and Mythic Health mod. All right, for my weapons, guys, I did have the Merciless uh, Assault Rifle. This uh, long gun was pretty amazing. Basically, uh, what it does is you the main trait on it is called Bloodline. Fires a devastating blast which penetrates through all enemies in its path, dealing 517.5 damage with a 25% critical damage bonus and times three stagger. Blood damage is increased by 50% for each enemy that uh, the bullets are penetrated the, that are penetrated by the bullets. I paired this with Twisted Rounds just so I can get a little bit of increase in range. What Twisted Round does is increase range damage of this weapon by 20% to bleeding targets. And at level 10, the weapon's range, weak spot, and range critical hits apply bleeding, dealing 690 bleed over 10 seconds. 
but use whichever mutator that works best for you guys. I did. I, I just went with this so I can get a little bit increased in range. But you know, the momentum mutator would have been great with all the harmonizer, whichever mutator that works best for your gameplay. All right, for my melee weapon, guys, I was using the nightshade. And basically what it does is fi it's fast striking claws with a high critical hit chance. And when you use neutral dodge, it grants the power of lifesteal. The trade on it is called Beyond the Veil. Neutral evade turns to miss, granting nightshade 5% base damage is lifesteal. And I pair this with steadfast, so that way my charge melee attacks cannot be erupted. And at level 10, all damage taken during a charge melee attack is converted to great health. All right, uh, using the nebula on this particular build, it worked very well. So, you know, I like using it for the AoE to kill the ads and you know do a little bit of damage to the bosses as well but the main perk is called nano swarm it unleashes a swarm of nano machines that seek after the enemies within 20 meters and repeatedly attacking them 20.7 acid, acid damage and this lasts for 15 seconds i and maelstorm i basically use that mutator to increase this weapon elemental damage by 10 percent for each unique status effect on the target and at level 10 it increases my generation and elemental damage by 20 percent Overall, it worked pretty good. I saw I was able to get this mod back pretty quickly using the Mutator Maelstorm. All right, for Marines, guys, I did have the Zanus Malice. What it does is dealing weak spot damage increases weak spot damage by 10% for 7 seconds. Sacks up to 3 times to get up 30% bonus for weak spot damage with this particular ring. Probability Core just gives you a flat increase critical hit damage by 30%. Great for all types of damage builds. All right, this ring right here, the Ring of Anastasia's Inspiration. When receiving healing effects, you gain haste for 10 seconds. Guys, because I've got the Trinket Heart on, I'm always receiving haste. Uh, and there's a total bonus of 7% increased action for the wear. All right, the Burden of Destroyer was one of the rings I was using. Decreased ideal range by 25%, but you get a bonus increase to all damage dealt by 15%. And, you know, if you didn't want to wear this ring here, you could have well, definitely try to win for a little bit more damage. Uh, now, the, the necklace I was wearing, or pendant, it was called a Navigator's Pendant, and what it does is grants 25% health, 25% stamina, and minus 10 armor encumbrance, and this is what made, was helping make my character be so tanky. Uh, as you can see, guys, I had 207 health and 225 uh, armor, and I did have much tooth tonic on as well, and remember, because I got a tranquil heart, I'm always getting that passive uh, haste, which is 7% increased actions to the wearer for all actions that I do. As long as I got a trinket with that passive healing going on. All right, so let's look at my weapon stats, guys. I had a fire rate of 7%. That's because of the, the that ring. Critical damage at 80%. Overall base bonus damage 15%. And weak spot damage of 15%. Overall, it's a pretty balanced build in my opinion. Very tanky. You can take a good bit of hits. All right, so let's go to Trace. You get strong back. Comes automatically with the Challenger class. I got 10 points in that. You get automatically untouchable, which helps increase the value winning by 30%. Get 10, I got 10 points in that. Triage, increase healing by 50%. Got 10 points in that, guys. Uh, Rigo got 10 points in that, so I can get some health regen. Fortify, just improve my overall armor effectiveness by 50%. Got 10 points in that. Ammo, got two points in that, uh, you know, so I don't have any ammo issues. Uh, long shot, so, you know, be able to get those shots off a little bit further. Flash caster, I got two points in that so I can use my mods and skills a little bit faster. I got 10 points in vigor. You know, you want to have max health. Got, I got uh, increased mod generation spirit, got 10, 10 points in that. Expertise, got 10 points in so I get my skills back faster. Siphon, I got 10 points in that so because it gives me life steal. A bark skin reduces all damage, I got 10 points in that. And I got two points in endurance, guys, to uh, increase stamina by 6%. Overall, amazing build. Uh, it's pretty, very fun to play with. You know, I, it's not one of the most uh, best boss killers in the game, but it does work pretty good. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and still enjoying the content. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video today. All right, D-Werewolf out.